quiz example, you're watching Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sunam Pem. Our top stories this week. Government launched 34 business services online. Druk Finsum Thokpa's North Thimpu candidate, Zenju Nidu, decides not to contest in the upcoming by-election. And Druk Holding and Investments Limited saw 31.24% increase in its total income. Business licenses can now be applied or renewed online. The government on Thursday launched 34 online government to business or G2B services. The G2C office under the Prime Minister's office launched the services in collaboration with the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Prime Minister Sring Topge graced the launching ceremony. Various business services provided by departments under Economic Affairs Ministry are included in the online G2B services. The services include issuance of new license, renewal, change of license for micro-trade, retail, wholesale, cottage and many others. Prime Minister Sring Topge described the launching of the 34 online business services as significant milestone due to sheer number of services being offered online. It will benefit not only to renew the licenses, but we can also apply for a new license. If it is convenient for them, people will come forward to work and it will help those who are willing to start a new business. Prime Minister added, online services will reduce waiting time, corruption, streamline procedures and improve public service delivery. The application of the 34 services will be carried online. After submitting documents and verifications done by the ministry, applicants will receive text message directing them to collect certificate and make payment. People can avail the online services from the community centers in the Gewoks. Sonam Wangmo was the first person to get her business license online during the launch of the service in Samdup Jonkar. Once we apply it online, they keep it all ready and we just have to come here and collect our licenses. Following the launch, the services were handed over to the Economic Affairs Ministry. The services will be integrated with the Prime Minister's e-desk for effective monitoring and continuity of the services. With additional reporting from Kinlawang Chu in Samdup Jonkar, Sonam Choden, BBS News. The quality of the East-West Highway from Simtoka till Lobesa is found to be above the standard. Prime Minister Sring Topge tested the quality of the road using the core cutting machine on Friday last week. Once complete, the East-West Highway is expected to be the best road in the country. Core cutting machine was used to check the quality of the blacktops. The machine is used to drill the bitumen. The sample was then presented to the Prime Minister who measured the length of the bitumen to compare with the standard specification. The sample was found to be beyond the actual required specification of 125 mm. Prime Minister therefore commended the site supervisors and contractors for the job well done. The entire east-west highway will be tested using the core cutting machine. We are targeting it to be the best highway in Bhutan. In fact, one of the top best ones in the uh, region, in the Sark region. We cannot compete uh, to be the top 10 or top 5, but we should be uh, proud enough to have uh, this road uh, considered one of the best in the region. So that's why we are all for it. The, past, uh, the top priority is being given to this uh, East West Highway. The contract liability period has been increased from one to three years. This means contractors will now be liable for any road damages for three years. 
Contractors therefore are stressing on quality from the beginning. Since this is the national highway, this is the top distinct priority of the, of the country. So we, we always uh, this thing, uh, this thing, uh, keep in, in our mind that the quality should not be compromised. And the thickness of the road, thickness of the bitumen, thickness of the this thing, DVM, AC and all in technical terms. We forget about the, the, the specification, we go above the thickness, we go above the quality. Over 45 contractors are currently engaged in this highway widening works. Once complete, commuters plying through the highway are expected to reach Tashigang in 10 hours. The 7.2 billion east-west highway widening works began last year, and it is supposed to complete by mid-2018. The government of India is funding the highway widening works. For Sonam Penjur, this is Kilyangdan for BBS News. The first set of cell phones in Bhutan was introduced in 2003 with 2,255 users. And 13 years down the line, almost every individual owns a cell phone now. It has become a necessity. As of June 2016, there are more than 686,000 mobile phone subscribers in the country. As per the records maintained by the Bhutan Infocom and Media Authority, mobile phone subscribers have increased by almost 10,000 in one year. It has increased from 676,000 in 2015 to 686,000 this year. When we started in 2003, we used 2G technology and during that time only the voice and SMS, it's, uh, we don't have other features. Now uh, after 2008, when you have launched 3G services and also with the evolution of the mobile uh, uh, handset, the things have changed. We have moved from the ordinary uh, uh, mobile phone to a smartphone. With the smartphone, you have more features now. I think at present now, um, with the smartphone, I think mobile phone is everything. An increase in the number of cell phone users has led to increase in the number of internet users. Internet services were first started in 1999. When we started the internet, we started with the basic internet service, that is the dial-up service, which is a narrow-band internet. The speed-wise also very low, and people have a lot of difficulties because sometimes you have to wait maybe hours even to get connected to the system to, to, to browse internet. Now the things have changed, Shunila, because uh, with the change of technology and also, again, like I said, with the introduction of competition, now we have moved from a narrowband internet to a broadband internet. Today, there are more than 500,000 internet subscribers. Srinder Magalton, BBS News. A group of vegetable vendors in Poro are not happy with the Zonkak administration's decision to tear down their temporary sheds. Vendors at the Paro Vegetable Market are frustrated with the short time they were given to vacate the space. Officials, however, say due notice and information was already given. The incident, which took place Monday, started to escalate, requiring police intervention to calm things down. <laughs> Local vegetable vendors pleaded, screamed and even confronted the officials in an attempt to do all they could to stop them. The Zonkakin municipal officials tore down around 60 temporary sheds at the vegetable market which they said were illegal. The vendors at the market were filled with mixed emotions as they saw their stalls being demolished. They say they are now left with huge stocks of vegetables still to be sold, no place to sell them and huge debts to cover. We take around 2 to 3 lakhs loan and do this business. We make some money every month and struggle to make the payments and meet our expenses. But now this is how it is. The vegetables just reached last Saturday. I just got my bill of 12,000. Now how am I going to make the payments? We are not going to be able to sell the vegetables. They are all lying there. I am a poor woman. We have a lot of unsold vegetables left. I made 3,755 meters on Sunday and still have around 17 to 18,000 worth of vegetables left. I don't know what to do now. I couldn't sell anything today. We asked for some time, but they refused. They told us to move immediately. 
I paid thousands to make the tables, which they broke and put it in their vehicles. I have sacks and boxes of vegetables left to be sold. You can see them there. The Dongkok administration, meanwhile, says they had informed them several times, both verbally and in written. A letter was first written to them in July to remove the structures themselves. After they did not comply, the Dongkok then sent them a notice on Friday last week saying that they would be removing the structures. We have been sending them notice and informing them all the time because they are all common people. These structures are illegal. We already have structures built by the government for them to use. But they have built their own sheets here and we have told them about the need to take it down. Dongrup Kiligals shares that this would contribute hugely to waste management, which is a big problem at the market. He also shared that they would be introducing token system to allow all sellers to avail the services fairly. Like in Timpu, we are now planning to provide the vendors with tokens and move around the stalls in rotation. This is because if you let them stay in one place, they start keeping the things there permanently and then slowly starting extending their space. The market would also be closed for a few days for renovation. For Ishigalton in Poro, Kilyangden for BBS News. Druk Finsum Sokpa's North Thimpu candidate, Senju Nidup, has decided not to contest in the upcoming by-election to be held before November this year. Senju Nidup said he decided not to mix politics with religion as per his mother's bidding. He said his mother is religious. The opposition had introduced the 30-year-old businessman last Friday as the contender against People's Democratic Party's candidate. Ring. North Thimpu constituency lost its member of parliament, Kinga Tsering, after he resigned to pursue further studies abroad recently. DPT's party president and opposition leader Dr. Pema Jamsu said news of Senchunidup's resignation came as a shock to the party. According to party president, Senchunidup was enthusiastic about standing as the North Thimpu candidate for Drukfinsum Sokpa. The party is expecting specific reasons for his resignation. We have to discuss in the party whether we would, uh, you, know, you know, how we would look at his resignation or if he has offered his resignation, what kind of steps we would take. But uh, we wanted, if he wants to resign, we would like him to give us very specific reasons as to what made him change his mind overnight. From one day to the next, if he changes his mind, there must be something very substantive. And the word going around is that he has been pressurized. He's under a lot of pressure from different sources to be true. So that could be the reason, but he did not say that, and we want him to come out with a better reason than saying that you know, uh, you know, he's interfering with his business and so on. Shakespeare was brought live on stage by the Ministry of Education with its first production. It was to mark and launch the reintroduction of Shakespeare in the English curriculum. The program was graced by Her Royal Highness Princess Sunam Dechen Wanchu at the Royal Convention Center. So there it is in rising air. An intensive training was given to the students of various schools in Thimpu to come up with this special performance. The students sat for an audition upon which they were selected. These students gave an impressive performance and the audience were taken aback to the Shakespearean age. The two little masters of ceremony were the highlight of the program and the youngest in the team. And she is trying to convince me and trying really hard in making me fall in love with Shakespeare as well. And Shylock's monologue by Prime Minister Tsring Topke added an enthusiasm to the whole program. It was a surprise performance and a treat for the audience by the Prime Minister. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? 
the current dramas in classes 11 and 12 will be replaced by The Merchant of Venice from 2017. This play has been identified to start with as it is relatively simpler and easier than others according to Royal Education Council. Around 174 teachers teaching classes 11 and 12 will attend a 10-day orientation workshop during the winter break to teach the place competently. Sunampem for BBS News. Early childhood care and development centers can nurture children and prepare them for schooling with right attitudes and habits. But ECCD centers have not been able to cater to the children of special needs in the country. To fill this gap, a five-day capacity building training program was given to the facilitators. 20 facilitators from 11 Zonkuks participated in the training program. Facilitators will be equipped with knowledge and skills to include children with special needs in the ECCD centers. Beda Giri, the executive director of Ability Bhutan Society said a parental survey found that children with special needs are not included in the ECCD centers. They have been always uh, mentioning that they don't have the facilities for the delivering of the services and managing these children. And most of the time they have been always excluded and they have been never identified. And we want uh, the children, all children to be included equally and with their rights, be it with any abilities. Jean Ho, speech and language therapies from Singapore, is one of the training facilitators. She said, parents do not send their special needs children to the ECCD centers due to lack of trained facilitators. What this training aims to do is to empower the facilitators um, to be familiar with the children with special needs um, and how to handle them within the classroom. Uh, we are hoping um, and aiming to uh, have an inclusive classroom, which means that um, all ch children, uh, regardless of their learning abilities, will be able to attend um, an ECCD centre. The ECCD facilitators are excited to apply the lessons learned in their centres as they find it informative and applicable. In our centre, we face challenge in catering our service to the children who are speech impaired and slow learners. Till date, we faced difficulty in handling children with special needs. But this training has taught us how to help special needs children, in particular along with other children. We hope that with whatever we have learned in this training, we will be able to help the children back in our respective centers. The five-day training program is supported by the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives. Sunampem for PBS News. Druk Holding and Investments Limited saw 31.24% increase in its total income for the fiscal year 2014-15. The increase in revenue was driven by DHI-owned companies under energy, resource and trading segment as per its 2015 annual report. The four hydropower plants under Druk Green Power Corporation contributed the highest revenue of 14 billion newton. Bhutan Power Corporation is the second highest contributor with over 9.7 billion newton. Druk Air Corporation with its revenue of 2.9 billion newton is the third highest contributor. Both Bhutan Telecom and Bank of Bhutan generated 2.7 billion newton each in the same year. In general, the energy and resource sector saw about 20% increase in its revenue. The trading sector, State Trading Corporation of Bhutan Limited, saw 20% increase in its revenue. Currently, there are 26 companies under Druk Holding and Investments. Pasa, PBS News. Government is waiting for Bhutan Infocom and Media Authorities report on quality of service experience to decide on whether a third telecom operator will come in or not. The government, during mid the press session in May, said they will look into possibility of bringing in a third operator by September if the two existing operators do not improve their services. The government, during a mid the press session in May, said they will announce the possibility of a third telecom operator by the beginning of this month. But according to the Minister of Information and Communications, government will take the decision once BIGMA files in the report. BIGMA carried out a survey on quality of service experience in eight Zonkaks besides Thimpu. 
The survey, according to Bigma, reviews user perspectives on mobile network services, which will be tallied to the results of key performance indicator of the operators. Key performance indicator refers to the network performance of every mobile tower. The authority has been analyzing the network performance of 50 mobile network towers in Thimpu for five consecutive months starting April this year. From this key performance indicator, we will be able to get the real uh, information of the network performance. So now we will try to see whether the, the perspective of the user and the network key uh, network performance match or not. And if there is a problem, then we will also try to see where the problem is. So, so that as a regulator, we have a clear picture of what the real problem is all about. As the Regulatory Authority for Information, Communication and Telecom and Media Sector, Bigma also signed a performance agreement with Bhutan Telecom and Tashisel in March this year to ensure improved mobile network service. However, Bigma said the idea of survey is intended to improve service delivery and has nothing to do with third operator. Poop Game for BBS News. Drugel Zong reconstruction project in Poro is well on track. They are now in the process of reconstructing a new Utsi. The works are being carried out in traditional methods using local materials. This is to preserve the ancient architectural designs. Over a hundred workers are working day and night at the Dukalzong reconstruction site. Currently, works are being carried out to construct a new Utsi. The old five-storied Utsi, which was in ruins, was demolished in June earlier this year. The construction of a similar five-storied Utsi started last month. We have finished collecting the timber and stones. We have started making the windows and doors and also cutting and shaping of the stones. According to the project manager, construction works are being carried out using traditional methods and local construction materials such as the red clay as was in the past. This is to preserve the essence of the ancient architectures. They are hoping to complete the structure by February next year. Workers have started working overtime and also during the weekends. Namgi shares that they previously had tough time transporting materials to the site. But after clearing a temporary road, it has now become easier. We cleared a road for our vehicles. And we also brought in an excavator which has been able to do many of the demolition works. This has also eased the need for more levels. The reconstruction of the Drugel Zone started this year upon the command of His Majesty the King. Compiled for Yusha Gelson in Poro, Sunampem, PBS News. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for joining us. This is Sunampem saying goodbye.